Rachel. And I'm Steven. And we're the Faint Divinities, a channel here on Twitch and YouTube and Discord and Twitter. Da, da, da. Uh, devoted to playing Dagger Heart, which is the new tabletop RPG from the Darrington Press and Critical Role Groups. Uh, in open beta, version 1.3 right now. Uh, and we have just, if you're joining us for the first time or watching this for the first time on YouTube, we have just finished our four, technically, but three actual play sessions of the Sablewood Messengers, which was the, or is still, the, uh, the quick start adventure that is published as part of the open beta. It's a really, f it was, it was fun. I, I know that today's feedback, but did you guys have fun as just an opening question? It was dope. Uh, yeah. Yeah? It's pretty cool. It was a good time. It was, it was a good play test for sure. Yeah. Well, okay. So today, the purpose of today is that we are doing a play test, right? So the entire purpose beyond just having fun with you guys is to talk about what is going right in the open beta, in the system, what's going wrong in the system, um, what we enjoyed, what feedback we can give, especially like kind of survey details and stuff like that. Uh, that way, again, I've said this before as part of my call to action, but the more we can break things now, the more they can fix before what I assume is gonna be 2025, summer of 2025 release happens. And then we're playing the final finished polished version and you don't have a ranger whose Beastmaster doesn't work in your entire player handbook for eternity and you have to rely on Unearthed Arcana. Um, so, but that's it. So I think today, I don't know how much people have prepared for things that they want to talk about, but I have watched several different teams play groups rather play this quick start adventure and now i know that some of you were doing little peeksies before but being a little cautious but now you can watch the full thing and everything um but i have a, i know a lot of the feedback that other teams have had i'm really interested to hear y'alls as players so i figured we might start because again one of my favorite things about this group is that we have two people that we are playing with who have before this literally never played tabletop RPG before. Um, Kayla and Chris, y'all have played obviously uh, like Baldur's Gate 3. Chris and Kayla are both very aware of Critical Robert Role game. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like we played it all together. Um, but did. <laughs> how did y'all like it? Everybody like very talk. Much. <laughs> like, <laughs> go ahead. I like, you'd like. I like the role play parts a lot better than the battle part, but okay. because you're here to help me, the battle parts are okay, you know. Ooh. And you do a lot of story stuff in the battle, so it makes it fun. I don't know that I would like it as much if it was just like, oh, I'm a barbarian. I went over there. I hit him with an axe. Oh, he's dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. I don't know. I had like a opposite effect of like. I found the combat very easy for me to understand because I've played a ton of video games and stuff my whole life, but um, I've never improv'd. So like oh. that was like that the true. first time when someone's like, what is your backstory? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm supposed was, to like, know that? Yeah. You didn't write hard. it for yeah. me? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I feel like by session three, though, it gets like easier, you know, the more you do it. It's just a muscle that like, is a niche muscle. I don't know where mm -hmm. else you would like hone that skill. I think right. Kayla's like a writer, right? So you're more used to probably uh, I'm just thinking of stories and yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> used to just artist. watching stories and having them told to me. Um, <laughs> so you that's do cool. great. Yeah, yeah, thanks. The I'm very I'm jealous really that you came up with your character and not me because he's amazing. The tooth thing. Is really good. <laughs> I knew really good. when he very. said it to me, I was like, Kayla's mm -hmm. going to be so jealous. She's made a cute, sweet frog <laughs> and she's always and the murder is, hobo. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised uh, when you played. I wanted it to Adora. be different. I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. I know, she's so cute. She, she really is. Next time. Next time. Next time. Murder and everything. <laughs> I think your feedback is. Um, 
very interesting to me. So because y'all are new to tabletop RPG, I think I've talked to this about, I've talked about this to both of you separately, but this is the crux of the tabletop RPG discussion is what is more important and should be prioritized and all of this. Like oh, for a lot of people, tabletop RPG, especially Dungeons and Dragons, started out as a dungeon delve. It was entirely get riches, battle enemies and then every session you rinsed and repeated and in fact only a few years ago when we really it was kind of i don't want to give critical role all the credit they weren't the first ones doing it but they were certainly one of the first groups we that got a lot of attention that started doing heavy role play at table and there was a big debate in the community of are they doing it wrong da 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 um so it's really interesting that y'all have those takes of like, this is what I like. This is what they like. Cause y'all are representative of both sides of the story. I really think that's cool. Yeah. And the other thing is y'all were both great at both. Like Kayla got that in the first <laughs> battle. You got the, the turning of the tides hit with your blast that you would go on to use in the finale as well. Um, your opening the battle was cry fun. was sick too. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, your yeah. rallies, so good. Mm -hmm. They're fun. Those are nerve wracking. I don't know, because I don't know when the battle's coming. I cannot prepare it ahead of time. That is stressful. Me with the uh, I did think. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was cute. You were just like, oh, can I go? <laughs> both were so cute. Like, so I remember them both so vividly. The first one was, there's four of them and four of us. We can take them, boys. So good. <laughs> and then the second one was, Jimbo, you know you're not gonna die here, and we're and then not he gonna did. die here either. He did. Yes. I can't get over that, Jim. Mm -hmm. You shattered her. That it's was a great wild. Moment, though. Oh my god, <laughs> it was good. Yeah. In real life, I was very stressed. I was like, he's not supposed to, guys. <laughs> this, this story, is story I wrote. before so is that that wasn't there rachel but, saved us yeah well i mean again though and that's what we're going to talk about too is this again it's not cheating because it's built into this play test of we don't know the scaling yet and i think that that last battle is a little bit tough um it's very hard you know you and a lot of people are dying on it as yeah. evidence of that again i've watched a lot of people play this and i think in three of the five i've watched and hours people have died you sh level ones are meant to be squishy maybe that's part of it mm -hmm. or maybe those dudes that are d20 emotion blasting your butts is from um Velocidad also said in chat as long as everyone at the table is participating and safe you aren't doing it wrong and i love that and i agree yeah how hard is it we're just spending time with our friends around the table mm -hmm. it's such a good time yeah. yeah it's super important to just like have that like uh and i i think that's something that like this group did really well like right off the bat especially with two new players is just like being comfortable chatting and talking to each other because i think that's like a huge part of making role play fun um is like being comfortable like talking with the people and joking and playing and having that kind of like fun i don't know if other people are hearing steven like not I loud am. at all or but i'm hearing but... you breaking up at the end so I much hear, breaking up I could hear no. him, but it's a little quiet no. <laughs> so i could understand like, him but though, mike's so. right here yeah <laughs> the crazy but i mean i get what you're <laughs> saying it feels cozy and so i'm not like scared to like yeah. mess up so i'm not afraid to talk so. i think that we did a, a really good job especially with two new players role play can be really difficult uh that's pretty vulnerable for, for me yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah just like talking and pretending to be someone you know once right? you become an adult you don't do that very often this is true <laughs> oh the make-believe yeah i was talking to kayla about this that like as a child if you were a creative kid who daydreamed a lot you were like they really wanted to kick that out of you you know mm -hmm. and they, they were like stop daydreaming i was like i finished my work i could daydream if i want to they were like absolutely not absolutely not <laughs> like so like I do like that it all comes from full circle as adults we get to do this again. And thank you, Cindo Window. I really appreciate it. I hope that we're all at better levels now. Um, well, okay. 
I love all of that feedback. We'll talk about that stuff more. I do want to hear from my veteran players too, though. Thoughts? Mm. Uh, one thing I voiced back on that first session that I, I still think is like, might still need some tweaking or at least like more clarifications. Like you've done a good job on kind of clarifying, like they have like addendums for it, but or how it like initiative works on this game. Uh, very different from Dungeons or like D and D or even a uh, uh, Genesis that this one pulls from heavily. Uh, where it's like there's very static like here's a round everyone gets to go once like uh genesis is a little different where you can be a little more loose like this could be uh like a player initiative slot an enemy uh initiative slot more like two more players two more enemies whatever and just anyone can take a turn during that round uh all right during that spot during that round so you can just go around next round you can go in a totally different order uh where this one is just kind of anyone goes until you roll a fear or tokens get uh, used. This is a um, really good topic because this is one of the yeah. biggest conversations is about the fact that in Dungeons and Dragons, everybody has a turn. It goes just in order. Mm -hmm. And in this, it's all loosey goosey. Yeah. What do we think as a group about it? Like it, hate it, think it's good, but needs a little tweaking. I think that it's usable. Um, I think the biggest thing is it, it it almost makes you hesitate on like not wanting to jump yes. in front of somebody else. Exactly. <laughs> because I'm always scared somebody else is going to be thinking of something or that I'm like hogging the time. Yeah, yeah, and like that, and I'm really bad about that, especially like that, like because I've have I've been playing in for such a long time, and I love just being like, and then he did this, and then he does this, mm -hmm. and then he does this. Yeah. But like, yeah, uh, there was one part we were doing on that last uh, the previous session where we were like, we got down, we we're in kind of in dire straits. We had to like kind of pause for a second. I'm like, uh, at one point I was like, and hey, let me do this one thing. It, it doesn't cause a roll, so let me do it, and then y'all can go. Because if you roll and we get fear, they're going to go yeah. again. So it's like, hey, let's stop. I'm going to use yeah. these abilities just to get my health up or whatever. Now you go. You were but so like, smart I for figuring yeah. that out. So I don't know if everybody has really... I did it until he said that. And I was like, oh, I guess I could. Because like her inspirational words are not rolling anything. If there's mm -hmm. anything so you can do without rolling your duality dice, there is no way to turn it over to me. Like, because mm -hmm. there's no fear or failure that would occur. So, yeah. Unless you have a bunch of action tokens, you can just, like, cash I, those in to jump in. Yeah, I, I can choose to interrupt. And technically speaking, in talking with some of the community after the session and everything, I, I think that I may have... Now, I was totally in my bounds to do it, but I think that I may have still been utilizing a touch of the 1.2 mechanic for combat where you do not need to jump in every time that those are rolled you can instead just take the fear um so some of that was more but honestly i still had all of the tokens to use which is a different topic for later but yeah do we might as well use them yeah go ahead chris oh um i think sometimes it could like potentially put you at odds with your teammates intentions like um it ironed out for me later on as i played but I know, like, the first action I did was the tag team role, right? I didn't understand that, like, Jimbo's a rogue trying to, like, hide. <laughs> and I, like, pull him in and, like, grab me and smack people with me. Um, yeah. And no, he was like, can thing. I use my she made the She made the thing directly at him, the inspirational or whatever at the beginning, the rally. He is hiding. That and, was like, just dumb yeah. on my part. But... <laughs> but later on, I feel like I can understand what people are trying to do better. But early on, it's a little hard. Um... What was the other one I was gonna say? Well, so oh, like, no, no worries on my part for both of those. Like, <laughs> bad, roll with it either oh, way. Like, oh, cool. yeah, oh yeah, 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 it went out smooth. Like, um, sometimes too, like the bard right has an ability that pushes people away, and the warrior you have an ability where you whirlwind. So I'm looking for clumps of enemies, and mm -hmm. sometimes you are like hoping that you can get in there and do that before somebody mm -hmm. else like pushes them pushes away. Them away. Yeah. <laughs> And um, I mean, it would probably problem. Yeah, I feel like combat might benefit if from like a little bit more, and it just takes you out of like the role play mindset sometimes. But like discussion in between actions, like before we like are like initiating an attack or something, like being like, "Hey, I'm thinking about attacking," like having that kind of discussion. Um, 
with like this specific type of like initiative kind of like loosey goosey kind of everyone goes whenever they're ready uh because like right now uh it, it just it feels so weird to like be like waiting because like everyone like someone does something and then everyone's just like sitting i it's will like, yeah there there do i go next do i go next <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think there's positive and negatives to that the positives being like that keeps everyone engaged we're all waiting we're not like i got 10 yeah. people for my turn exactly yeah, go yeah, yeah. Oh, snack. <laughs> yeah, yeah i i think there are kind of two so first i do want to say i think some of all these problems i'm hearing are rooted to oh no i don't understand how my role play works and in tabletop rpg that is a great problem to have like it, I really love that. Philosodad said in chat, you yeah, can yeah. talk to each other and like plan and stuff. Fully agree, like Steven said. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to add to this though that I think some of the cool thing about this is that I imagine as you guys grow as a party, you're going to know these. Now y'all know that Jimbo's a rogue. So y'all yeah. are going to know mm -hmm. is he hiding before y'all do yeah. something, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you know, Kayla's next rally might be like, I don't know where Jimbo is. He's to probably the general gone, yeah. area. <laughs> <laughs> like, I he's think, in the ether, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I think some of that could be hard with the medium too, right? So, like, on a Discord call rather than in person, one person talks at a time. Whereas maybe when you're in person, you can like shoulder nudge and be like, I'm thinking of this while you're still mm -hmm. talking. Yeah, um, yeah, in that's person, why we didn't talk as much. Yeah, and I think I think that's something that we'll just have to like uh, uh, work through to talk more, like make it actually happen. Because yeah, in person, when you're sitting at a table and you've got people across from you and someone else is like talking through what they're doing, you can like lean over and be like, when they're done, let's team action and fucking do this mm -hmm. um, and like do something crazy right as soon as they're done versus like right now, Jesus. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it is yeah so yeah no, uh, yeah that was gonna be one bit uh, of feedback i had for not for like not for the play, not for the campaign but just for us as a party like uh we're like still learning each other's cues we're definitely doing a lot better now than the like, first session i was waiting a lot more because i was trying to figure out when that pauses and like we're trying mm -hmm. to also keep there from being any like gaps of air or you know gaps of time without talking to keep one for stream and one for uh, also for the, the recording and, nothing wrong with that but that's like something we're having to pick up on learn ourselves like yeah. you know we want to jump in but not wait too long yeah um, and i'm also like just coming off of being a dm for a long time online where I had, I had to purposely wait a long time to make sure everyone said their thing before i moved on to the next bit yeah. all right yeah that's something that i can learn a little bit better <laughs> like because because i i am an analog person i only I have never, I've only tried playing uh, any TTRPG, Dungeons and Dragons specifically, uh, once online. And I hate it and I never did it again. Um, some of that was just like, I didn't mesh with the group as much, but this was a big risk. I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. And, um, and I have, I think because of the way that my personality is, I have the keep driving forward, never let it stop. So if the ball drops, I'm like, here's the next thing, you know? Um, I could take a step back from that a little bit. What do y'all think about like for initiative? Cause I agree with you guys. Um, and I almost think that there might be a little bit of benefit to introduce that optional function where it is like a token based system. Each player at the beginning of combat, we could say you have three tokens and then only after everyone is out of tokens do we distribute three tokens again. How do y'all feel about that? I mean, for the playtest, might not be bad to try it out for like a session. Right. Yeah, yeah, just to it. like, I mean, it, it never hurts. Hurt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I we hate it. We'll just stop doing it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> once. Like, this is dumb. Because <laughs> I, I mean, if we if basically we can like do that, and then at any point we're like, hey, I know we're doing, I know we're using this rule, but. I think it'd be really helpful if I did this right now. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. yeah, open communication. I think that's really the biggest thing we need to do. Yeah, maybe y'all could have that of like, 
um, <laughs> my brain is so dumb. Like, I'm like, we'll get y'all little, like, green, red, and yellow flashcards. And when you're ready to take an action, you are all like, you're holding the green. And it's like, like, at those Brazilian steakhouses, you're like, I, I'm ready for the meat. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, in, in school, when they're like, I've got the speaking stick now. When yeah. You were yeah. About that. I have the, the, I have the mm-hmm. speaking stick. I would mm-hmm. like to murder this guy, please. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I think at table, this system would be a lot easier. Uh, but I actually, this group is so good for it because, again, every problem that we have, we're having the best version of it because the problem we have is everyone's very respectful and empathetic. So you're not trying to jump in over each other. I was more worried for other tables, the opposite. That's more what I hear from people mm-hmm. is, oh, what about somebody who's trying to take all the actions? We don't have that. <laughs> like, so There's that concern. And then also the one where like no one, someone that doesn't know how to, or doesn't want to speak up or doesn't want to like butt in. They, they're more of the quiet person. Like everyone here is like, well, we're at least still chiming in. We want to keep it going or keep moving. But I know there will yeah. be the opposite like that, you know, attention hog versus the like you know, person that just doesn't want to until they're called on yeah um, yeah yeah but our team roles too is cool for that like keeping everyone involved and fluid i feel like mm-hmm. I, yeah there's a lot of good at the table with bouncing back and forth which i think is nice and i think that the the game itself kind of like pushes for that to happen more often than some other like tabletops do um just with like the way it asks you to create certain things about the world and ask you to think about this or think about that. I I loved that. As a GM, like I you know, I want most of this conversation to be focused on the player characters and stuff um, and how players feel about the table because GMs are always used to suffering for our craft a little bit, you know? <laughs> um, but let me just tell y'all, the amount of work that goes into this versus G- D&D at table, wow, is this cool. I get to be like, I don't know, you tell me what beverages in the bar. Do you know how many libraries I've walked into and people are like, what books do I see? And I'm like, I have to have a like a, a just a library in a catalog? here. Catalog? Yeah. Like, I don't know, <laughs> what are you looking for? It, my, my, you... Favorite thing, my favorite tool was like at one point, like I just like got tired of making up names or my brain was just fried one day and they were just like, hey, what's this person's name? I'm like, he just like, I have the character, he points to his name tag on a shirt. What is, you, know, you tell me what, uh, like, or, <laughs> As the Keep character, like, you can see my name tag? What does it say? Amazing. <laughs> and, just, yeah, and then just every character they ran into then always had a name tag. <laughs> Oh God, I love that. What a good mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. So this game, when, when someone comes in and they're like, what books do I see? And you're like, I don't know what books do you see? It's so good. I love it so much. Um, One actually had a, it was, I played in a Genesis game this past weekend and uh, like it does pull again, these pull from each other a lot, especially for this, this part of it where it's a lot more just kind of group storytelling. Uh, One, the, basically the GM for that game had a thing where, Okay, a person's wanting to scout something. They're like looking over this uh, field and they're just like, there's a penile colony kind of thing. Like what's happening here? And like, so he rolls, he rolls well. And he's like, all right, DM decides, all right, you see two things. Hey, other two party members, each you name a thing that he sees and like kind of like, you now they're all kind of working together on like what is actually happening in this community. Uh, and so kind of build it out a little more. But was, I hadn't seen that before where like the other players decide what the success is for the other person. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, that's super cool. I I really wish that, man, at some point you will have to like take us through some other systems a little bit just to like flavor because tabletop is one of those things where if you don't have someone who's in the specific one you want to try, good luck. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're never going to find it. You're never going to get it. It's just going to happen. <laughs> like, so, um, okay. I, I did want to ask though... For this is one more question for my people who've been playing tabletop for a while and everything is Daggerheart versus I don't I I always care about other systems but since this one is diametrically opposed no I don't want to say that at all that's not true since this one is going to be competing with 
Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition primarily in terms that's just realistically what's going to happen. I hope that yeah, like, it's, the, it's the big one on the field. That's the big one on the field. That's just true. Um, what are y'all's thoughts um, about how? What I'm most interested in is those players who have never played or having to learn a new system. That's a big barrier, right? Dungeons and Dragons to me was hard. I'm lucky that I'm the person I am where I have like notebooks of stuff and I'm willing to just read so much. I feel, no, I don't want to say what I feel. What do y'all guys feel about this versus that? One versus the other. So one, one part that I'm like, kind of hesitant on holding judgment for is I, I want to wait until there's actually like either a physical book or a streamlined kind of like streamlined bit of consciousness of like a digital book. Because like right now, if I want to go try to find a certain rule or like uh, like earlier before the stream, I was trying to ask like, hey, what's going on with the vault mechanic? And like I'm say if I'm on uh, like control effing through a PDF or on uh, a demi plane, like, OK, cool. I found where the vault section is but it doesn't answer my question. And so I don't know where to find this. And it's like not in a very good order. Like, you know, a lot of connecting bits uh, like, or even like a reference to like, hey, go over here and look for more info. <laughs> uh, but again, like I know it's still they're piecing together uh, how the rules are gonna be organized, but like, that's like kind of one part I'm having trouble with at the moment. So a lot of just asking questions. I, yeah. just to that point, very briefly, mm -hmm. I literally have offered in my survey to Darrington Press of, hey, I already have a spreadsheet of quick reference. Can I send it to you? You could publish it. I'll edit it for version 1.3, but like I I realized the same problem very quickly and I was like, there ain't no way that I'm gonna get caught with my pants down. I'm gonna know what vulnerability does every damn time. And I have it in a little Excel spreadsheet, one tab, love it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that's that's what I would say as well. Is like the biggest thing right now. I feel like would be the issue to getting new players in is there's not a simple way to like actually look at it all in like one one quick effective manner. I would like to show my my new players what they give you as as a GM in basically any starter set you ever choose is like this is a DM screen that you hold uh -huh. that you place in front of yourself when you're playing at a table and you roll all your dice behind I, I don't know if people can hear me as I'm like covering my mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you roll everything behind this. It's like, oh, the illusion. That's what our little our frog, our ribbit frog by Jocelyn is. But these are great because, I mean, I know it's going to be flipped over for you, but like it literally has all the conditions on it. And it has like all of the armor and consumables and stuff. This, oh my God, they have to make one of these, right? They have to, please. I'm sure when they release the, like when they actually get finished up, they're gonna have something uh, for it. You know, Darrington Press is, is, on. is on. Yeah, they're they're gonna put out quality. Everything yeah, they do is quality. It's really good quality. It's gonna look good. Uh, my, my, my worry right now is like, they're kind of, they kind of did do a cheat sheet for character sheets and for like how a player goes through the progression, but like you don't want to have to have 10 cheat sheets on how to do everything. Exactly. You just want, mm -hmm. A one streamlined rule book and then you yeah. have the summarized versions of that <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I think no I was gonna say nope it just doesn't work that way the quick start adventure now that you guys are through it I know I was kind of gatekeeping that material for a little while um it does some pretty good jobs oh my gosh we have a cat do I have a cat oh double cats wow um so I don't know what I was saying. I got so excited about cats. Um, the Quick Start Adventure. Yeah. Saberwood Messengers, if you read that, it does have a lot of little tips, but not the in-depth ones that people are getting to when they get to that middle ground, you know? Yeah. So, all right. Um, my, my question for new players, and then we'll just do a more open forum, right? But, but the question I was really interested in is how hard was this system to pick up uh, i don't know if like... it's... Go ahead. <laughs> i don't know if it's just like the way my mind works i don't think i would have been able to pick it up if i didn't have someone that like 
I knew wasn't going to make me for asking a bunch of questions. Like if I just went to a comic book shop and I asked, um, you know, to join their thing or whatever, I would not, I don't know. I wouldn't have picked it up. I wouldn't have gone back. That's, yeah, that's, that, a, that seems to be a, like, that's always a problem with every TG, uh, RPG, but honestly, it's like, that that problem they did not solve that problem with this one. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And, yeah, and just... I want them to. I want yeah. this one because God, every other tabletop RPG has not been newcomer friendly. And in fact, we have some of the most gatekeepy people, which I get. We have this very precious, intimate, scary space. But man, do I want them to make it accessible, especially to women who have been excluded from these spaces for a very long time. Do you know how rare it is for me to exist? Not as much anymore, and not in our friend groups. Like, <laughs> Steven and Justin know that we got more female GMs in our little town that we were from than, than a lot of the dudes, you know? <laughs> we're really doing it out there. <laughs> well, you know, we may have to think of it in the mindset, like, maybe it's not these bigger ones, but the more of, like, there may have to be a more intro ones. I don't know if y'all have seen, like, the, uh, I'm, I'm thinking on the Honey Heist uh, type of, like, camp mm -hmm. thing. It's a, it's a one-sheeter. You can play, you can honestly run a campaign from this one-sheeter. You don't, you know, level up as you go, but you can find more stuff along the way. But, like, having that as, like, a intro kind of warm-up to RPGs honestly might be the, like, better consistent way to think about it. And then you, great, hey, you, you understand the mechanics here. Now, instead of just having your bear and criminal stat, you know, have three others. <laughs> and now you have your character sheet. Uh, yeah. But, I, I, don't yeah I, I don't know how you would make it beginner friendly. I don't know how you could. I, like, I Well, okay. So yeah. I will say, and again, maybe this is a, a, to our detriment as a group. The quick start adventure gives you pre-built characters. I could have handed y'all those, but also I, I, so maybe that to get people interested initially, but that just doesn't work for me as a person I, because if I'm not, like, I think that it's it's really something, especially with the pre-built characters and like the way this is set up currently. Um, Pre-builts are the easiest, quickest way to get someone to play the game without having them have to go through the minutia of creating a character. Um, it can be super exciting to like think about creating a character for new players. But then, like, the actual creation aspect can be very daunting for a new player sometimes. And it's almost better to hand new players, like, a character, um, especially if they're in a situation unlike ours, where we're very open and easygoing, and everyone here is going to answer any question that's asked without, like, you know, that kind of pushback that you might get from other, like, DMs or things like that. Um so like the new like the new character creation can be very daunting for like a first time player of any kind of tabletop um so having like that pre-made character i think that it doesn't work for everybody kind of like you were saying for yourself but i think that's that's the way you get new players in without making them feel overwhelmed right away. yeah velocity yeah. dad does uh, so I want to hear from Chris, but just because we just got the comment, Velocidad does bring up a fantastic point. And I know I brought this up in the past, mm -hmm. but I really want to talk about like two items. Number one is the play guide that I'm sharing now. Uh, the play guide is in every character sheet and it has like a quick reference for a lot of things. Like if you don't know how advantage or disadvantage works, it's on that page. If you don't know how the tag team works or what vulnerable means, really great. Also the sidecar is what, uh, they don't call it this in this manuscript, but the community knows it as the sidecar. Sidecar. <laughs> this is meant to be placed behind your character sheet and then slid out from the sides. Mm -hmm. I think by the time that you know your character, you probably don't need this as much, but when you're initially playing, super helpful, I think. Um, I do love these. Um, it's a great point. Uh, Chris, I think you had a totally different take on this, and I'd like to hear yours, because my question originally was, how difficult did you find to pick this up as a new player? Yeah, um, I think Kayla brought up a really good point, because it's like, for me, I didn't find it very difficult to pick up. I thought it was pretty simple and, like, easy going, but I have also the advantage of you, and I could just sit there and ask you. <laughs> 
any question I have without you getting annoyed, you know? Like, people who come in and fresh will have to ask strangers or figure it out on the internet. Um, but, yeah, with the advantages I have, you know, everyone's situation is going to be different. For me, I didn't find it too bad. I think for a new person, though, like, say if it's a full group of people, someone's going to have to DM. That would be brutal. I would never be able to figure that out. <laughs> First <laughs> you know, time DMing is like terrifying. Yeah, I remember uh, Rachel had been doing it for a while before I ran my like our first, my first little one shot where I was like, I think I can do it. Um, and I made a, I think I did a Scooby Doo. Do you remember that, Rachel? Uh, of course I do. I had to come off mute. Of course I do. I was Velma. I played her as a wizard. Yeah, that's it. I played her yeah. as a wizard, you guys. It was the best. Oh, was such a good uh, time. But yeah, it was it was like it was terrifying. I was sweating the whole time. But then once you're in it and you have people that are just like, tell me the next part, please. You're just like, oh, okay, this is like it, it, it's it. But it is uh, sweaty. <laughs> yeah. The first few times you're doing. It. <laughs> like I've always wanted to try tabletop RPGs, but I'm the only nerd I know, and Rachel right. was the next nerd I ever met. So it was like <laughs> the first time I ever like got some people that I'd be able to to play with. Um, I don't know how they fix accessibility with tabletop RPG. It's I... a pretty neat thing. Um, it's fun though. Honestly, AI. Like, like they just have AI GMs. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, let's not let's not advocate for AI in these spaces. But <laughs> me, they hire me, and I just every day as my job, I just sit with people, two games a day, you know. And here's how you play. I don't know. Like uh, Baldur's Gate, I guess. Honestly, Baldur's uh, Gate that's is an accessibility yeah. solution. <laughs> That really helps me on this. I know yeah. that you know that, that's, that's not probably what we so should fast. be advocating for, but no, I, yes, I mean it that's is. a huge yeah, it very much is because it's like look for sources of media um, that you can absorb and like take in that will give you kind of your stepping stones, your learning blocks to like make your transition to tabletop because that's what it is. Is you got to just find that thing that you're like okay i can kind of see myself doing it because i really like playing this or like i really like watching this or you know, whatever that thing is so wait for you to go through the motions without fear of judgment or even just other people around like playing Baldur's gate hey you can go sit in a hole for a couple hours get through character creation and then you know play a little bit and get the fill for it uh and it's like oh, okay i get this so Care Bear Dare said in chat, and just yeah. as a note, remember guys how I said just a moment ago that where I'm from, women are really kind of we we run the space a little bit. It's an Amazon, oh, an Am it's an Amazon community. Care Bear Dare is one of the people from that community, and we've never even played together, but I know of her just because there are so many of us women who do it. She said, in our local AL, which is Adventurers League, for those of you who don't know, Dungeons & Dragons has a thing called Adventurers League. It's a way for people who don't have like a built-in friend group to basically find tables in a community, in a city. A lot of cities have this, and they sign up, and they come get to play a character led by a local dungeon master. Um for Care Bear Dare, and I used to run these before she was there. Um, in the local Adventures League group, I run new player workshops, wh workshops, workshops where we teach people how to make characters or give the option of pretending characters and go over the sheets right before a short game. I wonder if something like that, public play, is in the roadmap for Daggerheart. New players seem to really appreciate it, and we actually get a lot of non male players that way. Uh, she did clarify pre-generated not pretending that's that's a good point um I so I really hope so and I actually because I love Darrington press I am going to I've already I already know that I'm doing this um and sorry for my voice quavering there uh but I really love Darrington press and I'm already gonna be offering to game stores around where I live of, hey, there's this new thing. Do you want me to come teach people how to do it? Because I just, I love doing that kind of stuff. Also, they are going to have, oh, I don't know if I can, I, I 
so uh, yeah, I'll I'll say it. It's fine. Um, they are going to start doing dagger heart games at conventions. Um, they they have already been doing these, but it's pretty light touch. Um, but it's happening a little bit more. I potentially will be running some games at Gen Con this year um, in late July, early August. Um, that's I'm in dialogues to do that. That's not the same thing, right? That's for like the the cream of the or not the cream of the crop, but the people who make their whole lives tabletop and yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that it's 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 great exposure because like it's it's letting Daggerheart be in a public forum where people aren't just getting to play it, but right afterwards getting to talk about it with the people two tables over that they are heard laughing and having a good time. But then also walking two tables in the opposite direction to the people that they saw just get a total party wipe and be like, you can like actually communicate and be like, what happened there? What happened here? A, a large convention like that would be super cool. But yeah, fantastic point, Care Bear Deer. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh. I will say though, um, while I found the game pretty like chill to pick up, uh, I still don't even like really know what stress does. I feel like Yay. it never came into play, right? Like, no. so, so I have the personality no. where like, I just start playing and I rip it, but. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I think that uh, that is a huge point is like there are certain mechanics that they aren't like As I overly do. clear on. Once you get your stress counter filled all the way up, it makes you vulnerable, correct? Is that what it does? That's what it does, yeah. So we should talk about this though, because remember guys, this is an open beta. Yeah. And in version 1.2, stress was very important because yeah. w when you, when remember your minor hit point threshold used to not be one, it used to be like yeah. three. And if you were yeah. hit under that, you took a stress. And then mm -hmm. you got to kind of, I, I do love it theoretically because this whole system you can tell is built to kind of drive role play and you're supposed to be like, my character is getting frazzled, like, ah, you know, like. Yeah, like even though they didn't get hit, they still got a sword swept across their face and it was like inches away. Like they're frazzled for a second right yeah. after that. Everything um, is a way to show the tear. Go ahead, Justin. Mm -hmm. I was gonna note like on uh, the HP and stress, like that's also something I keep bringing up Genesis a lot, but they definitely, I think they list it as their first thing in the list of like where they're pulling from. Uh, health and stress are the, your two main things you're moving basically. Uh, that's like, that's your only two things you have to, you know, go up and down, no armor or anything else. And it's basically anytime, like, not necessarily that you got hit or that you failed something that may cause stress. Anytime you use magic or certain abilities, that will cause or strain uh, in that game. Uh, but then, like, anytime, say, you're in that game's equivalent of rolling hope, you know, you say you got advantages on that game, you can use those to reduce your strain level and to keep yourself, like, in the mix. But if that ever maxed out, you drop unconscious, basically. Or, like, you're just, you're wore out from stress or strain. But uh, now, until, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. so, oh, no, my cat. <laughs> so um, now he has asthma, you guys, and sometimes he has little things, and I gave him medicine, so he's okay. I'm going to hide him, but... So I'm a little asthma. It's okay. I have medicine for him. But um, uh, so stress now in version 1.3, the most important thing it does did not happen to anyone. <laughs> um, but if you max out on stress, all of your st stress points are filled. You gain the condition of vulnerable. Now Jimbo was vulnerable in the last combat. Oh, vulnerable the whole time. Unrelated to stress, though. What vulnerable oh, does? Stressed. Yeah, he was very stressed. Yeah, <laughs> it went hand in hand. But if was dead. if you're vulnerable, every attack against you is at advantage. So he, that's why Jimbo died. Sorry, spoilers, but that's why. <laughs> remember, he, I rolled and he was fine. And then Justin was like, point of order, I, I am vulnerable. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. So is that the only negative part of like you're full on stress? Yeah. You, when you're vulnerable there and you can't use abilities that require you to spend or basically mark another stress, is that the only re requirement? Or At only this thing there? point. And, and yes. I think that feedback is valuable for Darrington mm. Press. Stress doesn't feel like anything in version 1.3. I don't no, care about it. Or I use it to fly. Like, yeah, even I really think like if they're going to like push for like once you're full on stress, you get vulnerable and like this is like things. I, I like that. I think they should bring back the idea of, uh, you know, the 
like minor nicks, basically. The minor, yeah, the, 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 the minor not being at one. Like yeah. having that small window. It doesn't need to be big, but a small window that like helps start generating stress. Um, and it like feels rewarding in some ways to players, but also it's stressful because like now it's like, okay, I'm not intending to not get hit all these times. Like you're hitting me, but you're rolling low damage and it's not actually hitting me. I'm about to get vulnerable just because you've only done little damage four times in a, in a row. I would, I would like to see a little more like kind of back and forth on stress. Like even if it's like if there, you had more, more common ways of reducing it. If there's also more like you know greater ways to increase it. Like even just having like in more role play situations, just you're in an intense mm -hmm. conversation, things aren't going your way, your stress is going to go up a little bit. Uh, and you know if you have easier ways to bring that down, that's fine. But at the same time, like if you're in a very stressful conversation, that gets bumped up a handful of times, and then you go straight into a combat. Hey, now you're short. You're not able to use your abilities, or you're you know become vulnerable much quicker. But mm -hmm. just have that way to kind of make it go back and forth that actually like something, comes into play more. Yeah, yeah, something to make it come into play. Something to like utilize it in some way or another. I felt like in one point two, right? Like stress was a foil to evasion, and yeah. so you managed your stress rather than managing your health. And if you're an armor guy, you manage your health rather than that. They got rid of that, so I don't really know like what it plays off of now yeah maybe at higher levels your abilities use more stress and we're just like not there yeah. maybe but like my, at... my like my abilities that i currently have didn't use stress at all before the update before i was like great i don't have to worry about stress basically at all and now they made it where if i want to hide oh, yeah. i have to mark stress oh, but yeah. i was like initially how i was building the character i didn't have that in mind i'm like great i can go hide i get advantage i can go hit stuff great that's all i gotta worry about mm -hmm. uh Yes, Velocidad does make a great point. So the GM can give you a stress every time you roll with fear. So a stressful conversation could add a lot of stress. This is a great point, but hmm. it's it's two things. So in version 1.2, I don't get to utilize fear for multiple things at a time. I make a choice. And what I was finding is that, especially in once we get to the combat point, right, it's not worth it to to use it for fear when I could use it to hit you. It felt like to me that could be wrong. The other thing that I found to be a little bit interesting about this system is the manuscript kind of tells you you shouldn't be rolling all of the time. Your players should roll, and I, I do get this, right? How often have y'all walked into a room in Dungeons and & Dragons and they call for a perception check and everybody rolls and it just... You give them all the information because why wouldn't you anyway? It's stupid. Um, but this really drives hard into the only have people roll if there could be a negative outcome for it. Um, and so y'all weren't rolling a ton in like session two, the early part of session three, there weren't like a ton of rolls happening. So I wasn't really, we weren't really generating a lot of fear or hope either direction you know yeah good point and maybe that's for but, me you know maybe i have to well, make that, roll more and maybe that's just something that like when once we get into like uh an actual like city or something we might generate we might be doing that more often because we're talking to people trying to trade stuff do stuff like I still really don't know what's happening this... with steven's mic yeah, 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 quiet yeah you might just want really? to be closer <laughs> I mean, it's like it's right, right there. Here. Got it. Hello. Wow, um, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so maybe like it's just something that like in this playtest there wasn't a lot of opportunity to use it in conversation. Well, it it really just is though that like I was even talking to Chris after the one and he was like, I I feel like I should have just been able to take the tooth you know, for the, for the soul, for the, for the, you know, death glimpse moment. And I was like, yeah, but I, I, I did feel like it was at least a momentous enough moment that it warranted something. Um, and also low key, it was like, yo, we haven't rolled in an hour, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, no, I just mentioned it cause uh, I love rolling just in general. Everybody loves fun. rolling. Yeah. Um, but I guess I was just like, well, what, I guess there wasn't anything negative that could happen. Oh, that I was my only like, question, right? Yeah, no, no, no. I had negative things in mind that could have happened. Like, 
She, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says as she cutely pets her hair. She's like, no, no, no. I had. No, I was gonna straight up fucking murder you. No I'm kidding. Like, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it was gonna. She's not kidding. Everything around that whole in it, like exchange was meant to be uh, potentially very scary because we were dealing with like this death concept and the glimpse and. I, I, this isn't something that a lot of GMs talk about all the time because we want to position ourselves as like the all-knowing, unquestionable, but the reality is is that a lot of us, just like your characters come alive at the table and you don't know everything about them until you're playing with them, I don't know everything about the NPCs until I'm playing them. That's why Lausa got like a little bit sultry there is because I just said a thing and all of a sudden it was like, well, I guess this is who she is now. Um, and the White Fire Arcanist was not meant to be as scary as she was just meant to be kind of quirky. But then I was playing her and I was like, how is this not terrifying, you know? So she became a hag so fast. <laughs> she was just, ha-ha, true the so, deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> twitch, twitch, twitch. Yeah, she was scary. So. But. Um, okay, just so we're we're almost at an hour. This is so fun. I love these kinds of things. The philosophy of this is so fun and engaging for me. Um, what what just like general open forum thoughts and feedback do we have? I'm having a great time, lads. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's I'd give it like a nine out of ten for me. Yeah. Like I'm having a good time. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, cause... it's a good way to spend a Wednesday or Monday, whatever. Yeah. It's doing its job, you know, for like having a good time. Yeah. yeah. That was going to be one of my questions is at the end of the day for everyone, like I always, because I'm a kid of the 90s, so that question got ingrained in my head is the juice worth the squeeze? So the <laughs> squeeze is learning this new system, taking time out of busy schedules being together and the juice is the fun that you get out of that is the juice worth the squeeze for this yeah, yeah. i think so for sure I, I think I, uh, so. There, there's some parts of me that want to want to hold a little bit longer. I'm used to like at this point now. I'm used to like great. I've uh, started playing a new system. I'm gonna just deep dive into it, learn all the things I need to. I've been kind of slowing myself down, trying to do the more of the player approach this time. So I'm like, great. I have a very limited view, and I see a lot of holes that could probably be filled, but I just I I don't know what that is yet. Uh, but so I'm I'm, I'm holding. But like for, I, I, I'm trying to think back to when I started playing D and D forever ago. At this point, like. I did only have that brief amount of information, but I'm trying to like compare it to that, but yeah. uh, it's well, hard. Well, what do you get out of that comparison so far? Anything worthy? Uh, oh, yeah, that's why I, I need to go back and do that kind of look through the DM side just to see what I was missing. Yes. Uh, just to see if like there are still those holes because yeah. they still might be because uh, like some of the questions I felt like I was asking, like even still, like I feel like those should be answerable. Like me as a player, like the, I'll repeat the question I had before, but like I was trying to determine like, are my domain cards in my vaults? Uh, like for the ones I didn't pick uh, when I started the game, yeah. uh, are they in my vault or just uh, they basically don't exist in my character until I level up again? Because like how I initially was creating my character, I interpreted it as great. I get to pick a couple, and then at any point I can switch these out and pay the stress. But I just never had that really clarified. Uh, and, yeah, I don't know. It was probably written well, in my face. And I just overlooked it. Lasso uh, Dad says they are not. Yeah, we, we've talked um, about. But this. We'll, but we'll, we'll yeah we'll have to like the really the thing is is like and that's kind of what we were talking about earlier is like right now it's not super easy just to like quickly find information you're quieter as you went again god damn it <laughs> okay Stephen Freezer, is he just looking down at the he's moment just looking i'm looking down, down. Oh, sorry he's, yeah, yeah, very yeah, yeah. Like, oh, he's thinking about his audio no 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 yeah I was, I was uh uh also reading chat too oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I'm dialoguing back and forth with people. Yeah, Philosodad is absolutely right. You have a... Well, I think this is probably a good point to kind of transition because we're at an hour in and we do need to talk about leveling up. So yep. let's let's go ahead and transition. Before we do the formal, I do want to remind everyone, you can actually... I misspoke in one of our videos. There is... Was it always there and I was just tired? I don't know. But if you want to submit a survey, you can go to Daggerheart 
and you click on the play dagger heart link uh, up at the top you have the player play test survey and the game master play test survey if you go in it is going to ask you for some of your details when you do it like this is the play to player one you have to give your email so I'm not gonna be completing this here you guys because it'll pop mine up um, ask you where you are but I've gone ahead and gone into one of them I believe uh, yeah so for the GM one, for example, it asks me how many players were they, what session number, uh, where was the game session run, all kinds of stuff. I if, if you've been reading the materials, you can complete this. So if you've been listening to the materials, I think you can also complete this. So, you know, go ahead and everybody submit the feedback that you've seen. Um, yeah, I like the deck building stuff too, Velocidad. It does kind of remind me of Darrington Press's Queen by Midnight, is, which is a great, I just a spokesperson for their team. I just love them. I really do. It's crazy. Um, okay, so let's talk about leveling up. Here we go. You ready, Steven? <laughs> yeah. Oh, He's ready, dude. Yeah. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel. And I'm Steven. And we are the Faint frozen. Divinities. <laughs> that was Wait, what? Okay, let's frozen. Hey, there she is. Oh. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, let's... I know. I just froze. We're doing it one You're more fine. time. Why Sorry. not? We'll do it one more time.